A very pleasant evening to one and all present here. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. With this quote in this warm evening to refresh and create onto the mind, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Savita Engineering College brings to you a webinar on Building Your Career and Our Nation, My Lessons from Sweden by Mr. B.V. Sudhir Kumar, Chief Executive Officer, Siri AB, Information Technology and Services, Sweden. A glimpse about our college and department, Savita Engineering College established in the year 2001, an autonomous institution which follows the Finland-based education model and we march towards less is more concept. Our college makes the students job ready by providing Industry 4.0 ready curriculum which imparts the 21st century skills. Project-based learning integrated with subjects improves the student's skill set and makes our learners to be the best which is the motto of a college. The Department of ECE was established in the year 2001. Our vision is to develop this department into a state of art with center of excellence in electronics and communication engineering education on par with global standards. The Department of ECE has well experienced faculty of proven ability and diverse specialization the faculty actively involves themselves in research in the field of robotics, VLSI, MEMS, image processing, and embedded systems. Now I would request Dr. Pa Raji Pandurangan, ma'am, assistant professor, EC department, to introduce our guest of the day. Ma'am, please take over the session. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening, Vanando. It's a great opportunity for me to move forward to introduce my friend, B.V. Sudhir Kumar, CEO, Siri AB. He had an urge for grabbing all the opportunities that come on his way. Thus, he started his career with German electronic giant companies at Bangalore. He then wanted to explore his knowledge by working on various telecom technologies in India, Sweden, UK, and France. He is an anxious man to contribute himself in R&D or evolution of technologies like 5G and autonomous driving, thereby add a good analysis of market needs that drive towards research and development. He couldn't stop becoming renowned entrepreneur, thus became the founder and CEO of Siri AB, a Sweden-based firm branching at various locations like Stockholm, Gothenburg, in Sweden and Berlin in German, Hyderabad in India, which provides service to Europe and Indian research developments in the fields of telecom and automotive industries. I welcome a great philanthropist to share his uh, opinion of difference in engineering at India versus Sweden. Welcome, Sudhir. Session is yours. You can continue. Thank you, Raji and uh, Elizabeth and Savita Engineering College for providing me this opportunity to share my learnings of Sweden. So, yeah, just uh, how are you all? I hope you are doing uh, good and healthy in this uh, pandemic situation. So today I'm going to share my lessons learned from Sweden. Before getting into the uh, lessons, are you able to see my slides? So just share your screen, sir. Can you see my slides now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, just before getting into the subject of uh, my lesson, lessons learned from Sweden, I'd like to brief about uh, me. Thanks, Raji, for briefing about me. My name is Sudhir. As you all know, I'm heading Siri AB. I was born and brought up in a place called Nellur. I did my schooling up to plus two in Nellur. Then uh, with the vision of getting the job and so on, I started my engineering. So I choose the electronics and communication. The only reason why I have chosen the electronics and communication was 
to find some job where I'll be getting more opportunities. That's how I have chosen it. There was no other uh, mathematics behind that one. I completed my engineering in Babatla Engineering College. Then after the completion of the engineering, like uh, yeah, all other engineers, I started searching the job. Then I started my career with the Siemens communication software. During that time, I had few more opportunities, but I have chosen Siemens because it is telecommunications and I thought I will be using some knowledge what I gained from the engineering. That's how I started my career. Initially, I worked on to the handset side and after two years, like COVID pandemic and all, there was a 9-11 attack and that has impacted Siemens. After working two years, there was a reduction at the Siemens. So that has given the opportunity for me to look into new opportunity where I started, restarted with a company called Saskin Communications. During that time, I was working with the network side. So it has given a new opportunity. Every uh, season like pandemic or any incident, it gives the new opportunities. That's what I believe in. Then I started with the Siemens communication. I worked there for five years. So during this period, there was a, some financial crisis in my family, which was forced me to get out of India. So I was having a very good job life and I got married. I had one lovely kid and so on. This was a bit more about me. And I came from a uh, middle-class family from moderate family who, where my parents are living in Nellore. This is a bit about me. Now, before getting into the what I have learned during this year, I'd like to brief a bit about the Siri AB and what was the reason behind starting the Siri AB. So, a bit about Siri AB. When I uh, started my journey outside in India. Initially, I worked a few months in UK, Birmingham for a Motorola client. And then I worked sometime in Nuremberg in Germany, Paris in France, and finally reached Sweden in 2007. When I went there, the initial thought was just to stay for the time where I fulfill my financial need. So the plan was just for two years. Now it is already 13 years I'm stuck there. You'll understand why I got stuck there in the next part of my presentation. So uh, between 2007 and 11, I was working at different technical and marriage, managerial positions at Ericsson. Ericsson is one of the big telecom uh, OEM based out of Sweden. After working for four years, then I started thinking as an engineer. My dad is a role model and I had always one question. My dad is uneducated, but still he was giving five employments. And then I started thinking, as an engineer, I want to achieve something more. So what is the best thing that we can do the, for the society? The best thing anybody can give it to the society is building a good society by providing employment. We believe providing the employment is the only way to build a very good nation. That's the thought pushed me to start from employment more to the entrepreneur. And before uh, starting the Siri AB, the first thing anybody encounter is uh, the name of the company. So the name we have chosen Siri because Sirisha is co-founder of Siri and she is my wife. We both studied in uh, electronics and communication in Bapatla engineering. That is not only the reason. There is one more reason why we have chosen the Siri. It is the letters S-I-R-I, -I, Swedish Indian Resource Integration. We believe uh, helping India and Sweden is also my responsibility. That's why we started with the name of Siri. So when we started with uh, Siri AB, the purpose was to help both India and Sweden. Why India and Sweden? Sweden is, India is my home country and Sweden is like a, my second home country. 
then we have chosen a business that helps both india and sweden and it consulting was a low hanging fruit at that point of time because when you start any entrepreneurship journey finance is one part where uh, we thought by building it consulting we help both the countries how we are helping uh, sweden sweden is very rich in research and development probably you might use you might have used skype or bluetooth or uh, the three point uh, seat belt in the cars all these products have been probably candy crush is the one which you guys might know so these are all the products that came from sweden but then the technology is evolving at a faster pace compared to few decades before so if you take uh, i came from the technology telecom background so i am taking the telecom if you see a wireless communication between 2g to 3g people were uh, waited for 10 years between 3g to 4g it was 6 or 7 years before 4g is uh, stabilizing people are talking about 5g and also it is a global village if one operator or one oem can't provide it people will choose others for example if you take volvo cars if they say i'm giving a very good car you need to wait for 3 years do we think the customers will wait in this era no they will go probably they will go for audi bmw or tesla so these two force sweden uh, to do the productization quicker to the market that's when we thought india has a reach of talent by connecting both the countries there will be more benefit for the people who are coming from india to sweden to learn and see the different view and that is the main reason why when uh, savita engineering college approached me i thought why can't i give this information and knowledge back to you guys that's how it started and if you ask siri ab what we are doing we are helping telecommunication and automotive in the r&d to make two things reality at a faster pace one is making 5g and driverless car both into the reality we have around 100 people working currently siri ab has five offices across the globe uh, three offices in sweden malmo stockholm and gothenburg one in berlin and uh, one in uh, hyderabad india maybe in couple of years we will be having our office in chennai also yeah this is bit about the siri ap so now uh, before getting into the my lessons to sweden i would like to mention why it is needed why the change is needed why do we need to learn from some other place yeah every nation in the world has its own pros and cons but there are the things because of my job i keep traveling to india and europe every alternate month then i started thinking what was the situation of in india and what is it required to be more self sustaining in future so that's where i'm talking about india 1.0 that is job oriented or sustenance mode survival mode is the one that i name it as india 1.0 if you see couple of decades before and so on and all right the need of any person in india is to get the job because it was survival you know until 1850s right india economy used to be 25% of the global economy but after that for whatever the reasons and all the situation has come in a level where struggle for existence has started so during that time everyone's intention is to get some job and survive and that was the need of the hour at that point of time so all the decades even when we completed the engineering and all the only motive why i joined engineering not to do the great wonders the only thing that behind my mind is to get a job such kind of a thing has forced all the india to get into the employment mode that's what has given opportunities to put our uh, foot into the services business also because it was the need of the hour and we were taking whatever the jobs that we were getting and so on and all 
so this is about not only it with all the segments and industries so uh, that is about the india 1.0 until now but now there is a need for a change to make india into self sustaining for example if you take in terms of the agriculture or in terms of the natural resource india is self sustaining but when it comes for uh, uh, the it products or uh, different other industries still we need we have lot of work needs to be done and we need to shift the gears from job oriented to the innovation focus why it is needed and all i will be covering the next part of the sessions so the whole uh, the need is there to change the mindset from the short term benefits or existing survival mode to the long term thinking and product creation innovation innovation in all the areas let it be products let it be services this mindset will give you long career for you not only that one it lays a very good road for your next generations and that's where uh, i classify the slides into two parts one is products and services because of india 1.0 the services was the low hanging fruit where we have been doing some innovation and we have been doing the services business but now because of the technology the rate at which is changing and also with the artificial intelligence machine learning there are more and more human task repetitive task are being replaced with the machines why we have been successful in the services there are multiple reasons why we have been successful one is we have a very good talent but in addition to that one we have a huge skill available so huge number of people are available that means a lot of workforce are working into the services business so with the ai machine learning and all the technologies are evolving the number of jobs in this segment will come down is my analysis my own experience i was working at ericsson mobile uh, in lund sweden so we used to have a five testers who was doing the mobile testing but today if you see because of the test automation and so on there is only one tester available in the services segment because of this uh, uh, human and machine introduction the jobs are uh, decreasing and the only way to keep more and more jobs is to create more innovation even in the services that we started the journey and all what i learned uh, or what we need is we need to do the innovation more and more into the products that not only give the path and jobs for you but your next generations so if there is a one good product it gives the results for number of years or maybe 30 40 years and all you take it any of the example like nokia mobile it came from a small country but it is giving the runway for it has given so long couple of centuries and so on so with the change of mindset and shifting the gears and all what i uh, ask you guys is to think on the long term and solving the problem solution solving is the mode that we need to get into it need not be a big products or big thing even the small solutions has made a miracle which i am going to share the next part of the presentation so uh from moving from india 1.0 to 2.0 we need to concentrate both on products and services and this can be achieved only with the help of you there are multiple stakeholders which i will cover but you guys are one of the key stakeholders who can make this vision reality so the way that it is possible for the products to be successful 
with my experience in working in the R&D for the last two decades is by staying for the long term, looking for a long term benefits. Any products can be built if you have the people working for a long time, the product knowledge and the mood, the customer understanding, relations, all these things is possible if the people are working for a long time. Here, I would like to touch one more point that we are, we may be facing into the service industries. For India, one of the service industries, one of the challenges, attrition. People are coming for, and because of whatever the needs in the past, even I had a financial need and so on. So people work for a certain time and because of the pay package or XYZ and all, people are moving the companies. That forces the companies to increase their services price. So this also has a counter impact on the whole job market. So if you see 20 years before or 30 years before and all, right? The services cost in India is much lower than Western world. That's where many of the works are coming along with the technology or the skills, what is available and all. But today when we started, uh, I'm taking one step back. When we started in Siri AB, there were, uh, let's say 10 customers who was asking to execute work from Sweden. After 10 years, within 10 years, it came down to only one. The reason is because of this attrition and inflation rate increase and so on and all, right? The price has increased. Now, if you see the services, the India compared to Eastern Europe, Poland and uh, Russian parts, Ukraine, Vietnam, all these guys, we are at the same uh, price range. Now, we cannot use the same mechanism. That's where you need to create a product and build more value by bringing the solutions. So that's why it is very important for you guys to stay long term and concentrate on learning the things. The only question or the suggestion I have is you need to constantly ask what problem I solved, what knowledge I gained it. At least first five, 10 years you need to dedicate. If you see uh, later on, I will be mentioning some names where you will be seeing the people who are successful also, who stayed for long term in all these companies. And before getting into uh, some of the examples, I'm talking about the Sweden. I know uh, most of you might have not heard about the country named Sweden. Maybe now because of Volvo trucks and all came. It's a pretty small country. It's the size of population of uh, Sweden is almost same as Chennai, somewhere around 10, 11 million population. And if you see uh, the geographical location also, it, those are the islands. So they have to depend on many other countries, even for the food or in terms of day-to-day -day life and so on. And they import everything even if you take their food stuff and so on, right? They import everything. Even then, they moved from a very poor background to now. Now, today, Sweden is a very well-developed country. But if you see some 60, 70 years, it is very poor country. People couldn't afford to buy a fresh meat because they eat the meat. So fresh fish, that's why the food of Swedish traditional food is rotten fish. When we had a very uh, much wealth and all, these guys were struggling and they have built the advanced society just not by the fluke. They have done many things, which some things might be useful. My intention here is to giving the examples so that we need to take the good parts from there to India. India has a lot of good things also. But now, when we are talking about Sweden, right, what they have done, they decided to work with the long term vision of creating or solving the problems across the globe. 
that will give the runway for the next generations and next generations and next generation if you see sweden today it was because of a few decades before whatever the work they have done the results still they are enjoying today so i would like to explain this with a few of the small cases where you will understand what i am saying it the first one probably some of you might have read about ikea it is a furniture store based out of the sweden so what happened with this why is so important ikea first it was started by ingvar so the founder of ikea he came from a small place not even a 5000 people living in that village the a stands for almult is the place name in ikea so he was running a small furniture store in that place and then uh, on one friday there was a lady who was working in stockholm but based out of almult so she came to her hometown and then on the way she saw a furniture in ikea and she liked it very much but then she couldn't take it to stockholm because it was not fitting into her car see the public transportation or transportation of the goods is very costly in the europe because of the structure they have the dignity of labor or labor rules and so on so sending an article from one place to another place it is a very costly affair at that point of time so the lady told to ingvar saying yeah i like the furniture but i can't buy it then the question he asked is ma'am what happened no it is not fitting into my car i can't take it back then he told uh, okay ma'am how long you will be in uh, in almond he told uh, i she replied saying that two days i came for a weekend i'm going back on monday then he took that as a small problem and then that problem he wants to solve it then he replied to her saying that i will call you the next day and he called the lady next day and he packed the whole uh, chair into two uh, bags small packets and written a sing, simple slip saying the instructions you fix this one this one this one this one as simple as that small slip written and then giving that instruction back to her and she kept that uh, things into her car with the what are the instruction list and then she went to stockholm he clearly wrote the instructions it was so clear she was able to fix it that simple solution for that problem has changed the whole fate of ikea so then he started getting the orders from the other parts of the uh, sweden that's when uh, he started building the company now you know it is a one multi billion dollar company present across the globe did he made a rocket no he solved a small, a small one and the quotation of ikea is do it yourself diy so such a small change in the product furniture was there so many in the past but even then this small idea has made a huge change now they are providing 200 or 300000 jobs across the globe and in india also they started in hyderabad soon they are coming to chennai and other parts of the globe so currently they have right from us till the china they have the stores all the places and all this was possible to solve only one problem of course he just did not stop by solving that problem after that with the technology with the supply chain management and all he keep using them that's how the solution has given so many lives and so many uh, decades of runway and this is about the one story from sweden and the other one philip philip uh, tisander this guy is uh, 35 years 
and uh, he built a company called Daniel Wellington. Before uh, talking about his uh, company, I'd like to talk about bit about him. He's a 35 years uh, young person, one of the reputed uh, uh, entrepreneurs in Sweden. He did uh, his uh, Stockholm School of uh, Economics education. Then he started the venture. And here, what I want to uh, mention is keep trying, never be afraid of a failure. So this guy started one venture and he failed it. And he started the another one. He failed it. Like that, he started six ventures before he started the Daniel Wellington. Daniel Wellington is a watch company. Now it is competing with overall Switzerland industry. Swiss watch industry is very big. So what did he do differently than others? He also did a small innovations and small, he solved a small problem. When he was traveling to different parts of the Europe or uh, US, he met one guy where he saw one very good watch, but it was damn costly. Then he want to solve the problem of availability of very good model watches at an affordable price. By then, the watch industry is very matured. Everybody might think because of Titan or XYZ and all, right? Even if we need to start today, we think it is a capital intense industry. But he solved the problem of capital also. And he was never afraid of trying the things until it is successful. So what he did, he knows different parts of uh, globe has different strengths. And he is from Sweden. He knows the design capability. So he started with a few engineers in Sweden to have a nice design of the watch that they made it. After that, the next thing is manufacturing the watch. It is a very costly affair if he has to start the industries of production itself. So what he did, there are the things available. So he gone through the sub supply chain management and he made the arrangements with the, all the factories across the globe. And even today, he's a billionaire and the revenue is more than 2 billion Swedish crowns. They don't own a single factory. So he used the system of supply chain management to create the product at a lesser cost. In addition to that one, any of these uh, watch industries, right? The challenge is sales and marketing. So he was not stopped because of that. He wants to solve that problem of sales and marketing. He didn't have the money at the age of 30, he started. I think he started in 2011 with the first watch. By 2014, it was 1 million watches he sold it. And he did this one by himself he created the marketing. So the only change that he made it, right? As we all know, Facebook, Twitter and all, they use our data and they make the fortune out of it. This guy want to solve that one. This guy used the social media to create their marketing. So what he did when he made a few of the good watches, he went to the celebrities and asked them to wear and show in the Facebook and so on. As soon as they put it, he invested the money in such a way there used to be 10,000, 20,000 likes within a day. That created a curiosity in all the people. That's when started the people getting the, buying the watches and so on. So that's how Philip has solved the problems of capital. And also he never afraid of the failure. Believe me, failure is the first step of success. Even though I mentioned Siri AB, we have more than 50 million sec of uh, top line and five offices. I have seen many times up and down. There were the literally two times there was uh, the time where I touched zero also. So here I want to say, keep trying. Don't be afraid of the failure. And this small solution of the capital and solution of marketing now has generating 
couple of hundreds of jobs in Sweden across the globe. Now you can go and Google it about Daniel Wellington. There are many products like this and all these things are achieved because the people are thinking for the long term. Of course, we cannot expect every person will be thinking long term, but every person should try to do that one. And the next example I want to take it is Volvo. This is another example where you might have seen the Volvo trucks or Volvo buses and all, right? So the quality is redefined. We used to travel the buses. I was uh, working at Bangalore and uh, I was my hometown was Nellore and all. It was uh, used to be a lot horrible to travel. These guys, the innovation they made it is in terms of the quality. So Volvo is one of the safest vehicle when they came in with the quality of luxury. So that created more uh, interest across the globe. Such kind of a product has been built and there are n number of examples which you can see. Even the seat belts, right? What you see in every car, it is invented in Sweden. And even the Bluetooth technology has been invented. All these things, they are able to uh, do it because of long-term thing and one simple thing, what problem I am solving. Even we have the uh, few Swedish guys who are working with Siri AB. I keep observing them. And when they do two or three things in repetition, right? They always ask the question, do we need to do it? Or what can I solve to do that one? That's why even though we have a very good product like a Skype, they invented another product called whereby.com. You can go and uh, Google it. So that is a video conferencing, much more simple. It, it has no firewall, X, Y, Z, and so on. Such kind of a products, right, has been giving the benefits for all the Swedish guys. And the result of that one is the beautiful. What you are seeing is the Stockholm, one of the city, Stockholm. And if you see the top 10 happiest people on the globe, for the last 10 years, Sweden always comes in top 10. All these things are small, small changes that has created a, such a kind of ecosystem or the environment. Okay. So having said that, the all the good parts of the Sweden and all, I have been seeing there is a lot of change even in India. I'm so proud that uh, the journey has started. Why I think the journey has started, I want to give you a few points. You know, Indian engineers are good. You, I don't need to explain, right? From uh, Vishweshwaraya to C.V. Raman and all the people. So uh, the whole world knows that Indian engineers are pretty good engineers. So. Now, that was the uh, few decades before. And last one decade, we also proved that we are good at management and running a products and services companies. And here is the example, or Sundar Pichaya, he came from Chennai and whole his father's salary, one year salary used to be the flight ticket. Now he is running the best company, one of the best companies in the world. Likewise, Satya Nathalla, Ajay, Shantanu. There are n number of uh, Indian origin CEOs who are running the very big companies. So we know that we are very good engineers. Now these guys already proved that we are very good um, management guys. And we didn't stop there. And here is the next one. These are the guys who showed the path. I think probably you know uh, the Joho Sridhar Vembu. Uh, he is from Chennai and he is doing tremendous job of building the cloud-based products. And currently he is providing uh, 10,000 jobs. And when I recently heard his uh, podcast, and I there was a question asked him, Sridhar, what did motivated you to start the Joho? 
it was named some other company the only reason he explained is he was a telecom guy like me he was working at qualcomm us and when he went for the shopping he found all the articles made in us made in japan and other parts by then china was not there so then he thought why not made in india instead of complaining something he wants to do something that's when he started building the products in software why he has chosen software at the time even infosys was a small one and software was a uh, less capital intensive market today because of that long term vision of uh, creating something is providing 10000 jobs and one more wonderful thing he started the jobs in uh, second towns so he is not only creating the jobs he is thinking about the quality of life also tenkasi is the other place where you all guys might know he is employed i think a couple of hundreds of people there this is on the product side and you know ritesh agarwal he is also an kid so he started redefining the services segment he don't own a single hotel but he is one of the richest persons when it comes for the hotel business he didn't stop there now they recently i heard some of the videos of ritesh so he took this business to i think to uk and china and china also he learned the language in 9 months and he was one of the profitable companies and who has created more jobs in china too so with this information we started as engineers we done as a management guys we are going into the entrepreneurship mode in solving the problems but then as i explained the world is running at a faster pace and it is a global uh, village so what we need to do we need to add more fuel and the answer is that is you guys i'm pretty confident you guys will make india 2.0 vision quicker and reality with this i want to say thank you to sharing my learnings and as i mentioned the intention is to take the best parts of different parts of the world and build it so thank you all now i let uh, the team to go through the q and a thanks nancy elizabeth and raji i'm done with my presentation okay thank you so much sir it was a really wonderful session and we convey a heartful uh, thanks to you for sharing uh, your valuable knowledge with us and uh, whatever uh, your life experiences and so we have got few questions from our participants yeah. and uh, i'll ask you the questions um first question is like uh, i have a question how to know what we are best at uh, now we are speaking about the revolution of achievers what is the difference i have to know about me about me yeah so first you need to identify your strengths and look for the long term how to identify your strengths i have a simple uh, tip for that if you are doing a stressed work for couple of days also if you are not tired and you feel more motivated that is your strength and always look for what problem are you solving what long term uh, the next generation that you are giving so i hope i answered your question i don't know yes, i have no yes yeah. sir please uh, i have my team just uh, uh, elizabeth i have my team kiran and aditya so yes, i might not be knowing all the questions but my team will pitch in when there is a need okay sir okay yeah. uh the next question is from a participant how to find the right and wrong things in our way in our way yeah so uh, first thing is uh, you take what opportunity you get it you excel in that and if you are doing that one then plan for the other thing 
so whatever the work that you are doing it always you need to do it with excellence and keep working and keep trying the new things so it depends uh, one thing you need to identify is what is the most happiness are you getting and then how what problem are you solving these two questions you need for example some kind of people enjoy the repetitive task then they need to identify what kind of a job that will help them and every day you need to ask the one question by end of the day what did i learn today and did i enjoy the work that i have done today and then move to the next one and keep keep learning on your own and also one thing that worked for me i keep hearing about the learnings of the others so that i don't need to reinvent the wheel so that's what worked for me but for you you need to see where your interest is I, uh, can i also pitch in and answer Hi, uh, hello friends this is kiran uh, i'm colleague of uh, sudeer we work together um go ahead so i also want to compliment the answer that sudeer has given uh, in our view uh, there is it's not about right or wrong uh, it's about are you on the target or are you not on the target i mean Uh, in as a society right and wrong we not don't hurt others and etc so i'm not going into that uh, that aspect so about your work culture about your work thing as long as you are focused towards your end objective then that is right uh, if you are failing then there is something that you need to learn and then you need to do it again right so uh, instead of looking at right and wrong uh, as sudeep said focus only on learning so Uh, it is uh, repeatedly said that this particular uh, century would be all about learning unlearning and relearning as long as you could do that again and again learn something then you will realize that this particular learning is not right then you need to unlearn and learn it in a different way and then you will realize that what you have unlearned probably is right then you will have to learn that again as long as you could keep this cycle going then you are right thank you kiran sir that was very positive and the next question is like uh, is engineering a good career for the future from a participant yeah every discipline is a good career definitely engineering we have seen all the miracles of engineering and there are much more problems that needs to be solved in future so definitely engineering is a good career in whichever the field that you do you do your best okay sir the next question is why always a negative thought make us disturb our work maybe i let kiran to answer this one yeah, that is it is uh, it is a human brain probably the way the the, the wiring happen inside our brain uh, it it is that i mean uh, we evolved over uh, over several uh, decades several uh, centuries uh, and so uh, that as part of the human evolution uh, right from the mini microism to the human beings it's all about correcting something and then the survival of the fittest so we get alarmed with something going wrong that's uh, probably that's how the brains are made um you don't you don't have to uh, worry every time the brain gives you an alert saying that uh, there is something wrong uh, as long as you stick to uh, the learning the learning and unlearning or learning unlearning and the learning thank you sir and the next question is uh, how do i determine my startup cost and other expenses yeah for this question uh, recently i was uh, having a discussion of uh, sridhar vembu also start with small and you will figure it out on your way when we started siri also i didn't know how uh, how much cost that it takes and all i find the way on the way i mean i you find the solution on the way so when you have a idea there are multiple things of uh, multiple people uh, does if you are confident and uh, 
one thing for any startup or any company to be successful is financial discipline and cash flow management mostly you guys might not understand the cash flow management work but later on one once you understand that you are ready for that but when it comes for the budget and all i think start with small and keep looking and then if you still believe that it is more than your range that you can't afford the stress then join with the people who has that capability and form it as a team that's what uh, will help you to achieve your startup things so startup cost uh, will be defined like that is my view thank you sir that was a nice reply and the next question is what kind of person uh, makes a successful entrepreneur yeah i think uh, this one i want to cover the next point of my slides the key takeaways solution mindset persistent fail fast approach and think big these are the common qualities whether as an entrepreneur as an engineer i mean everything that helps so keep trying don't be afraid of failure and there is a saying that i learned in uh, sweden recently I was mentioning sweden too many times sorry i got spoiled by that so uh, keep trying but don't be foolish you need to keep trying and then you see when it is a dead end then you move on to the new one so one thing for sure is required in the entrepreneurship is hard work and be prepared that you will touch the ground once again in the life so the simple example when we started the siri ab i was working at ericsson and i was offered a very good uh, job and in fact to retain me my wife also got a job but i didn't take in when we decided siri ab so i worked for 5 years i spent all the time and i find my own way of uh, building the money and so on by giving the services i was the first engineer from siri who was working at ericsson and after working 5 years then i realized i cannot do both the uh, justification for both the jobs then i came out into uh, siri completely business i worked for one year and then suddenly there was a customer who went for bankruptcy all of a sudden whatever i earned 8 years that became a zero overnight but then i had a two choice either i need to go back to the job or i keep going with the idea which i believe and building from there i have chosen the right path right means i'm just explaining from the uh, right hand side so keep trying and hard work and forming a good team are the few things which will help you as a entrepreneur is my experiences thank you sir and the next question is uh, do you have any small business ideas with a small initial amount okay Uh, so yeah we started building the products division at siri ab if you have the ideas i think uh, you can approach us but one thing is uh, if you have the idea try it on your own and you will find the solution even for the finance i think one of the main reason asking this question is uh, there uh, existence or uh, uh, the day to day life i think entrepreneurs are the one not only building the things and also they find the problems uh, they find the solutions for the problems including finance okay yes sir that was kiran would you like to uh, add anything on that yeah um maybe uh, it's like uh, 
if you are looking for problems to solve i'm sure there are plenty uh, there are plenty of problems there are million dollar uh, problems uh, that are uh, that require solution i mean we are now in a pandemic situation which was not seen uh, uh, in the past so many solutions are needed now how do we solve social distancing in a public commute if social distancing becomes the normal then the roads get choked with private vehicles what can we do to undo that i'm not just thinking in the real time now the in the flow so there are so many problems that we just have to open our eyes and see it as a as a thing on how do we make our life easy as long as you go with that philosophy of making life easy you'll find so many problems to solve each one of them is a million dollar problem thank you sir and the one last question uh, how do i determine whether i'm capable of starting a business yeah just start it and be prepared for the storms that will be coming in <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sudhir sir, and uh, special thanks to Kiran sir and Aditya sir for their special appearance. That was so lively and awesome. It was great, oh, sir. That was and, great. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else you would like to share with us, sir? No, these are the key takeaways that I want to reiterate once again before closing. Thanks a lot, and uh, I am confident uh, we will see the India two thousand zero. shortly and hopefully we'll meet uh, some of your guys uh, across in the europe or in india okay so that's all from me thank you sir thank you and yeah. we thank all the participants for joining us today hope you'd have enjoyed the session well and most of the questions have been answered by our speaker and his friends i would like to thank dr raji pandurangan assistant professor ec department for coordinating today's webinar thank okay. you sir thank Thanks you a lot. Thank, thank you, you guys have a nice day you so so the your presentation has proved that necessity, necessity is mother of invention so this creates uh, innovative ideas in our mind thank you thank you aditya and kiran yeah. thank you thank you. thank you thank you sir i would like to share my screen sir i'll stop this